Bonjour. Je dois vous dire Hello. What you have said today, I saw it uh, in the state of urgency of uh, the idea that uh, CO2 influences the temperature. And he has theories that, uh, that man is responsible in the human population of pollution of our planet. It's in the film, and film called Kingsman. It's uh, well presented. My question is, if we can increase the precipitation, provoke rain, uh, to the extent that in certain parts of the globe there is uh, dryness and in the others there are inundations, is, is it that we can uh, stop also inundations? If we can do precipitation, provoke precipitation, can we stop inundations uh, on the other uh, parts of the planets? That's my question. Uh, in the activity in Mexico, uh, which went on from the late 90s to around 2008, they did have one, I think they got up to around 30 of these stations, and one of them was operating to inhibit rainfall to some success. So that has been something that has been shown to be possible. Um, I would also direct, uh, there's a scientist who's involved in some of this work, a, a Russian researcher by the name of Sergei Pulinets. Um, we've done an interview with him on this subject on the uh, website of the LaRouche Political Action Committee. And uh, I know he has done some work on some of the theoretical framework for rainfall reduction and inhibiting rainfall where it's not, uh, not desirable to have a huge amount of precipitation. So I know there's active investigation in the theory involved in that side of it, and then some work attempting to utilize that theory, and it uh, has been actualized in Mexico to some degree. Oui, bonjour. Moi, je viens des Caraïbes. I'm coming from the, from the Antilles, from the Cari Caribbean, from Guadeloupe. And obviously, I'm very sensitive to those questions of uh, climate change. We saw very recently our head of state, a grand specialist, so-called, of climatology. He did a tour of Guadeloupe, uh, Cuba, uh, passing by Haiti, saying that uh, we would see, we would see what we would see, and uh, scaring. Uh, the populations uh, to whom the message was, watch out, uh, certain among of you will disappear with uh, the rising of uh, the oceans. So as uh, the Professor François Gervais said it recently, what I want to know is, uh, uh, are those islands uh, to which I'm very attached will disappear, and why uh, this uh, uh, a total uh, story, alarmist story, yes, and why? For the uh, water level increase, I, I, I wanted to show a, a curve. The, 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 the curve shows that since the last ice age, the increase of ocean uh, level is the smallest ever. And the numbers are very well known. Uh, the satellite measurements give an, a, a three millimeter per year increase. If you take gauge measurements on the coasts, it's only 1.2 millimeter per year. Now, if you say 100 years, that would be uh, for gauge measurements on the coasts, it would be 11 centimeters, and um, if you don't trust those, it would be 33 centimeters. All authorities on coast uh, preservations know that existing dikes are uh, uh, absolutely capable of, of handling these things. So the official people know exactly these numbers, and there's absolutely nothing true about all these catastrophic uh, things which are intended to um, create fear among populations, and in the end to, to exploit them by, um, by asking them to pay for that. So the numbers are very well documented, and they are three millimeter per year, 
30 centimeter per decade per, per century per decade three centimeter and one if you trust gauge measurements so you can say it's it's absolutely un, unimportant and it's very well documented Je confirme tout à fait ce que dit euh, I confirm everything that uh, professor Weiss is saying a formula that I found uh, rather interesting the oceans are rising except around the islands where there has uh, all the instruments uh, show that it doesn't increase hardly it's hardly measurable and all the catas catastrophic uh, measurements of the film mentioned are totally fantasists Hello, <clears throat> my name is uh, Stefan Toxov. I'm part of the uh, German delegation of the Schiller Institute here. Part of uh, the presentations actually reminded me of some, I think, very important work that had also been done by our Australian colleagues uh, probably a couple of years ago, <clears throat> where they showed the origin of the idea of ecosystems as such, and this false claim of um, equilibriums uh, in these systems. Because I think to one degree or another, all the speakers touched upon this, uh, that it's, it's, this is connected with uh, causing fear in human beings. Fear of breaking something, fear of destroying something. So I also understand that a lot of the, uh, the dealing with this that we have done as an organization is partly uh, defensive and much more so in the, uh, I think in the uh, scientific communities that are not directly related to our organization. Uh, it's, you know, doing a lot of work, which I don't think is unimportant, but it's, in a sense, it's defensive. It, it's showing that the claim that these uh, oligarchs have, uh, these claims are not true. Now, what I think is um, maybe worth for you to address again um, is this question of the nature of human beings. I mean, you've shown that these, the fear is organized by an oligarchy, by people who want to destroy a large part of humanity, by people who have a disgusting worldview, who are in, lo in a lot of cases personally perverts. Um, but <clears throat> when it comes to the, the actual nature of man, I personally am very much with Kepler. I think the, the strongest motivation in human beings as a force in history is curiosity. Um, but I would like whoever feels uh, compelled or invited to do so to just say a few words again on the idea that human beings are a positive force in the universe. Uh, I think, for instance, one hint would be we're the only ones that I know that could actually bring life to areas where there's no life right now, on the planet or, and much more so off the planet Earth. But um, I would like to know what inspires you personally um, to defend human beings as something that is, you know, causes a positive... Uh, confident uh, and strong emotion in us to take up this fight because we're not just doing it um, I think to it's not a, you know the aim we have is not a negative that's what I understand but it's it's something to create something very very positive uh, and we just have to get a lot of trash out of the way but I I would very much uh, I'm very curious about other thoughts that you have because the panel presented uh, even in, in the limitation that you have outlined for this panel, quite a, an arc uh, of thought. So, but maybe you have some, some more thoughts on this, on this idea, why this is a, really a positive thing that we're fighting for and not just you know, defending ourselves against stupidity. Thank you. I think that deserves another panel. Um, <laughs> but I, I could just say, uh, I know working with Mr. LaRouche, he often has emphasized this historical story of Zeus versus Prometheus. And not just being a, uh, some ancient myth, but actually a reflection of the real principle of history, a real insight into a historical process that we're still fighting with today. What is the nature of mankind? How, do we, how should we treat society based upon our conception of the nature of mankind? We saw the story of Zeus 
deny people science, deny people technology, deny people agriculture, medicine. And when Prometheus brought these technologies and fire to mankind, Zeus punished him for that, for trying to free mankind from a servitude. You know, I, I'm, I'm personally from the United States. I see the American Revolution, especially the actions of a small handful of our so-called founding fathers as expressing that same fight. They had the same idea that mankind is inherently different than just a form of cattle that you treat like a herd of cattle, that every individual has a certain unique creative capability which you just don't see expressed in animal life. It's something unique about mankind and it defines a certain kind of natural law, so to speak. And it informs our ideas of how we need to organize society to uh, ensure the development of those powers in every individual in the population. You know, that is the idea of a republic, you know, that some of my founding fathers, led by Benjamin Franklin, Hamilton, had an insight into and fought for. And they fought against people who held the opposite view. We had a revolution against the British who had uh, an opposite view. So I think the key is seeing our current moment in that longer historical process, that much longer historical fight. You know, Prince Philip is just a new expression of this same idea that you could trace throughout the British Empire, through the Roman Empire before that, through, you know, all the way back to the time of Zeus and probably earlier. And you have another current which recognizes mankind as something different and has fought for organizing society in a different way. Uh, and you could, you know, we could have a whole discussion on the history of that process. But I think looking at the incredibly optimistic potential around what's going on with the leadership of the BRICS nations and the New Silk Road, uh, from this context, from this historical perspective, I think is incredibly important because it shows us that we do have a potential to create a new system of relation among nations, among the leading nations, which can control the dynamic of the world, shape the dynamic of the world towards growth, towards progress, where the, the dynamic can actually, you know, the whole 20th century, the dynamic's been war, conflict. Uh, and we have the potential to actually create a system based upon win-win cooperation, a recognition that uh, fundamental human progress progress of our species. We're one species. We share one uh, characteristic. Progress of our species as a whole in this fundamental way is the source of wealth and growth for all of us. So a mature system of relation among nations is going to be premised on the idea that, we, that nations and leading nations and leading blocks of nations cooperate in pursuing that in particular. And, you know, it's not going to be perfect, it's not going to be, but that hasn't existed really, I don't think. You haven't had a world system dominated by that dynamic towards win-win cooperation and growth. And I think uh, inherent in that is the potential to put up front and center, and I think this is something that Mr. LaRouche is very emphatic on and very concerned about, that in this context, we put up front and center this question of what is mankind, what is this human species that we're a part of, that we're fighting to, to, to move forward, to progress. You know, actually, let, let's take that up as, as, a, as a conscious subject of investigation. What makes mankind a unique and creative force on this planet? And how then do we organize our societies, our relations among nations, to promote that unique creative capability in every individual? Can I make a very short... I, I should just like to make a very, very short um, addition. You cannot, on philosophical principles, from higher principles, derive a justification for things which are existing, like mankind. You cannot. There are no higher principles, un unless you are religious, unless you believe in God. Yeah. Uh, so it means uh, there is no justification for us existing. The only justification is subjective. I like to live. And if somebody tells me I'm a cancer on the earth, I'm against that, period. Yeah. 
euh, Peut-être oui. que cela est justement un petit peu la trace qu'il y a. This is, uh, 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 Miles wants to intervene now. I think uh, that there is something we must understand deeply. Ce que is what the oligarchy wants to kill in us, and we want to, we have to integrate uh, uh, this in us and, and take uh, to be fully conscious of this. This is uh, also what Jaurès did uh, to to know that there is a strength in. Uh, in us and in humanity as a whole, uh, based on on his uh, trust in himself, uh, its capacity to know if a thing is good or bad, and that uh, leads us to a question of optimism, which is also another thing that the oligarchy wants to kill. I don't know if you did the experience these last two days, or uh, when we did the concert, or in the past in your life, to listen to a, a, a musical piece and to feel inside of you a sentiment of something which is of the order of unity, of harmony, of something which uh, resounds, which is not uh, only an illusion, but it resounds within you as a reality. And when you uh, are facing that type of emotion, then you can say, uh, you have good reasons to say that humanity is a principle uh, which is part of the universe fully and it is not there by, uh, by pure chance, by hazard. Also, I would like to insist on, on this question, because in the beginning, this panel uh, was based on the, on, the, on the relation between art and science, and there's something very beautiful that Jaurès says about music, which is not obvious at all for us today, and he says that music has a power. It is not there to reflect emotions or sentiments or to, to give sounds. It is there to create something new in the human being, which doesn't exist yet and which we're not, we, we did not know anything about, because it's infinite, and music creates that sentiment. So therefore, is, there's something coherent in this universe that gives us the power to know infinity and to the universe as well. Alors, justement, Benjamin Bach de Solidarité Progrès. So, I'm Benjamin Bach of, of Solidarité et Progrès. Talking about coherence, I would like to ask a, a question uh, to Mr. Gervais. There's a gross incoherence uh, which is coming out in the press, in the French media, today, not, not in the scientific media, but in Le Monde. And they're saying that there was a real uh, growth, uh, climate uh, increase in the last, uh, in the last uh, couple of years. And and that they found the way of measuring it, but not through measurements of the ground. So I would like to uh, to ask Mr. Gervais what is is possible uh, to fight against this contradiction. So if there is something which horrifies a scientist uh, is to change uh, measurements uh, which were made uh, 25, 50, 100 years ago. You cannot change them. Uh, they have been done and they should not be manipulated. manipulated. It's absurd. So concerning the measurements uh, that were done and the way in which uh, certain climatologists are pushing them in one sense or the other uh, so that they become closer uh, to their model, it's absurd. You cannot do that. So the, the measures uh, which are the uh, closest are those made by satellites because Le professeur Weiss l'a monté tout. The professor Weiss showed it. Those, the most, the more ancient uh, measurements were only done in Europe because uh, there were no thermometers elsewhere. So we have uh, the more precise measurements in Europe. Uh, and then the satellites are going around the, the Earth uh, and they are measuring the, the radiation uh, and measuring the, the temperature uh, in the same condition uh, throughout the entire planet. So those are important. And the, and the last. Uh, uh, one of the things that one can say against them is that they did not compare uh, their measurements with the measurements made by satellite, which is uh, totally crazy. The, the, the IPCC, so-called scientists. Mm -hmm.
Uh, Gilbert Darceau, je suis originaire de l'hémisphère sud. He comes from the South Africa, from Madagascar, and I lived in France. So my question is like that of my colleague before me. When I look in my country where I was born, the sky is always blue. When I come to the Western countries uh, at 18 years or so, I look in the morning, the sky is a little bit blue. But we have uh, chemtrails, and when you look at the satellites, uh, they invaded all the planet. I want to know, since we we are there speaking about climatology, pressure, etc., and uh, us uh, as humans, uh, we are breathing this. So there's a study. Are there studies uh, which have been made about these chemtrails? Uh, and I would like to ask. Uh, But what are these things? The chem chemtrails. Sur ce sujet. On that subject. Depuis que les avions existent. Since airplanes exist. Voilà, haute altitude. And that they fly at high altitude. Réacteurs. The reactors. Lâche du CO2. Uh, are, are expelling CO2 and water vapor. Water vapor at high altitude becomes uh, ice crystals. And since the airplanes exist when they are flying at uh, high enough, and that humidity at that point is favorable, then we have uh, these uh, uh, condensation trails, not chem trails, but condensation trails. Uh, and contrails, uh, these, are, these are trails of condensation of of uh, water vapor, simply. Uh, well, I think I, I just want to, to, to say a word about that because uh, when we are talking about uh, climate, uh, well, generally it, it brings a lot of uh, uh, questions which sometimes are not uh, really uh, scientific. And uh, I, I think it was uh, Professor uh, Gervais who at some point uh, um, uh, recalled uh, that there is a lot of... Uh, uh, climate is also used as a way to uh, bring uh, fear, scares, and irrationality in the population. Uh, it has been so since uh, very long. Um, uh, now it has also some... Um, there is also a political uh, agenda uh, with that. Uh, and I think it is very interesting also So we absolutely have also to um, bring everything which has been said here into um, uh, with the consideration of uh, this um, uh, World Climate Summit and be clear that uh, uh, most of what is said officially about climate change uh, has also this uh, political um, Uh, aim, you know, that there, there will be this World Climate Summit uh, taking place. Uh, it will be a very important event uh, because when you have a big uh, crisis as we have now, uh, this is very useful uh, to divert the attention of people to things where you are using scares, fear, and people don't see any longer the reality. And the reality now is that of a world which is uh, really on the verge of um, uh, possibly thermonuclear war, uh, of a very, uh, as we have seen with the presentation of uh, Greece, uh, we might have Greece uh, exiting from uh, Euro uh, or U uh, the EU uh, very uh, soon. It is a possibility. And of course, uh, in that context, uh, uh, we have all these big uh, media, uh, this big, uh, you know, event uh, uh, which is uh, prepared and uh, which is used also for people uh, to focus on that, uh, to drive people to uh, that they become totally irrational. And here, what we are doing, what we want to, to accomplish uh, is just that, again, people, you know, that we use our mind uh, and uh, to, to reflect about what is re really science. And we have been, uh, uh, all the panels uh, have brought us with uh, a lot of material that we have to study, that we have to reflect uh, upon. And, um, you know, just um, uh, reconsider what is the human mind, you know. And uh, I think that's the important thing. And this question of, again, uh, the optimism that we don't uh, just uh, succumb 
to the irrationality that this financial oligarchy wants to have for the population. They want people to become irrational, because when people become irrational, uh, they can be very easily uh, manipulated. So uh, that's uh, one, one point. And I think, of course, uh, this panel, uh, Maël, has talked about uh, Jean Jaurès on the question more of um, uh, the question of uh, culture. Uh, there is also very much a thing that, and I think that Elga will have uh, uh, many things to, to say uh, about that, uh, but the question of uh, culture is totally, uh, absolutely linked uh, to that, uh, because if you have a culture which elevates uh, people, which really ennobles people, uh, then people won't become irrational. Because it is something uh, uh, why uh, we have, uh, why we want to have classical art uh, again, a real classical art. Uh, it, it is because uh, it is uh, addressing in uh, people in their mind uh, what is, uh, you know, what what is the most human, and it's uh, it is through this uh, classical art uh, that people people will find in themselves. Uh, uh, they, um, you know, they will remind that they are human, and uh, when you are human, you cannot uh, just accept uh, uh, everything which is uh, irrational, which is being said.